Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, our beloved soul. This is the day the Lord has made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We'll see if the Lord is a refuge and fortress, our God, and we will trust. Father God, we just say, have your perfect way. In your holy and precious name, Jesus Christ. Father, even now, hallelujah. Uh, you are the voice and I'm the mic. Jesus name our beloved so the word of the Lord came to me saying Eli's sons did wickedly I don't know where that is so we're gonna find it okay so just let's, let's, let's find it really quickly and let's read about it and then um, Eli's sons did wickedly for second First Samuel 2, so we're looking at First Samuel 2, come with me to the book of First Samuel 2 really quickly. We're going to read it and then we're going to do it street style. So First Samuel 2, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Samuel, Judges, Judges, First Samuel, there we go, First Samuel 2. It's amazing I opened it to 1 Samuel 2. You know, when I, 1 Samuel, I mean, not 1 Samuel 2, but 1 Samuel. All right, let's go. Let's read. So, check it up in verse... Mm, where? In verse 11-ish. Karabasui davaran diviala abasui yelala basui rokoroshi lirine. All right. So, if we just go through... Go through, um, if we would just go through the book of Samuel even um, very quickly, we would see where Hannah was praying for a child and she went to the Lord and, you know, she was she was um, praying it with such intensity in the spirit, you know, but she wasn't doing it loud. She was like, and Eli was looking at her and Eli thought she was drunk, right? But the Bible tells us that Hannah received a miracle, right? And she had a son and she called him Samuel. But the the promise, the vow was to give back the boy to the Lord, right? So that's what's going on in that part. And then in 1 Samuel 2, so we're gonna, where she gives thanks and all that. And we're taking it up in verse 11 of 1 Samuel 2. And this is what it says. Then... Elkanah went to his house at Ramah. But the child ministered to the Lord before Eli, the priest. Verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were corrupt. Just jump straight into it. Now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, this is verse 13, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Verse 14. Okay, so hold on a second. We're looking at the priest um, with his servant. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to read that again. And the priest's custom with the people was that any man, that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Verse 14. And then he would thrust it into the pan or the kettle or the cauldron or pot. And the priest would take for himself all that the flesh hook brought up. So they did in... Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Wait a minute. This was Sabbath. Sabbath, remember when uh when Abba let me uh walk into the place, you know, through his heart, of course the door. Um he was showing me the um fat and entrails burning. And remember he was saying something about the portion to the sons of Aaron or the Levites. Alright. So here we go. So we're reading. Just something to remember. And the priest's custom with the people that was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servant would come with a three-pronged flesh hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself all that the flesh hook brought up. So they did in Shiloh 
to all the Israelites who came there. Verse 15, also before they burned the fat, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who sacrificed, give meat for roasting to the priest, for he will not take boiled meat from you, but raw. Verse 16, and if the man said to him, they should really burn the fat first, then you may take as much as your heart desires. He would then answer him, no, but you must give it now. And if not, I will take it by force. And verse 17, therefore, the sin of the young men were very great before the Lord. So this is not how it was um, how it was laid out, right? And this is the wickedness that they were doing. It said, therefore, the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. Hmm. All right, so hold on there. For the men abhorred the offering of the Lord. They hated it. And it says in verse 18, But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child, wearing a linen effort. Aha! So Samuel's wearing this, um, this garment that says, you know, he's sanctified to the Lord. He loves the offerings of the Lord. He loves the ordinances of the Lord. And look what it says. Take it up in verse 19. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. All right. Now look what it says. So the, the sons of Eli are basically doing whatever they wish. And they're not um, allowing the people to do it the way that God ordained it, right? So it says, the, so this is Samuel now, Samuel's mom, Hannah, says of his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Verse 20, and then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, The Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. Then they would go to their own home. Verse 21, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Look at that. She couldn't conceive her first. So she had a baby boy. All right. And when she... When she promised that she, she vowed that she would give, um, give him back to the Lord, what happened? She gave him back to the Lord. And they said as soon as the child was weaned, is what I hear in the spirit. And um, the Bible tells us that God gave her back because she gave unto the Lord what she had vowed. All right, now hold on. And it said... Uh, verse 21, the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And meanwhile, the, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. So he was growing up in the ways of God. All right. Look what it says. Take it up in verse 22. Now Eli was very old and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel and how they lay with the woman who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So they were having sex with the women who were coming by the Lord's house in the tabernacle of meeting to meet with God. They were probably blackmailing them or raping them because the Bible says in the first instance, they were, they were forcing the people to do the, what the Lord had said not to do. Look what it says, take it up again. Verse 23, so he said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. Verse 24. No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people transgress. You know, even us, well, I'm coming to talk about it, even us. But verse 25. If one man sins against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? You know, I hear Abba saying, even as 
You can blaspheme. You can speak against the Son of Man. You could speak against Jesus as the Savior. You'd still be forgiven. But then he says, anybody blaspheme against the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, shall not be forgiven. All right, look what it says. I hear you, King. Look what it says. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? Nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father because the Lord desired to kill them. So they continued to do wicked continually. They continued in the way that was transgress transgression. Sin is transgression of the law. And the Bible says, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, the truth is not in them. All right, hold on. Um... Verse 26, and the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor, both with the Lord and with men. Here's what I hear Abba saying. Here's what I hear him saying. I hear him saying, just like Jesus grew in favor with God and with man, that's exactly what I heard when he said Samuel grew in stature and in favor with God. And even as they were saying it here, um, where is it? Samuel grew before the Lord. So, I didn't want to say it at the same time, but I'm waiting for him, his instruction. So, look what it says. It says that the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and men. So, he was wearing a linen effort. What was that saying? I hear him saying that it was protecting him. It, it was like representing what he was doing, who he stood for. It was just a linen effort. It would have been a garment over his chest. But he was stating in the spirit who he stood for. All right. Hold on. We're going even further. Let's go further. And it says, verse 27. Then a man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus says the Lord. Did I not clearly reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Verse 28. Did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense and to wear an effort before me? And did I not give to the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire. That's what he was talking about. Given to the Levites, the priests, and the sons of Aaron. Verse 29. Why do you kick at my sacrifice? He said to Eli, why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offering, which I have commanded in my dwelling place? And honor your sons more than me to make yourselves fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel my people so hmm. I hear him saying even as they robbed the people of Israel they robbed him alright look what it says in verse 30 therefore the Lord God of Israel says I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Verse 31. Behold, the, do the days are coming. That I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house. So that there will not be an old man in your house. In verse 32. And you will see an enemy in my dwelling place. Despite all the good which God does for Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. In verse 33. But any of your men whom I do not cut off from my altar shall consume your eyes and grieve your heart. 
and all the descendants of your house shall die in the flower of their age. Look what it says in verse 34. Now this shall be a sign to you that will come upon your two sons on Hophni and Phineas. In one day they shall die, both of them. And verse 35. And I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. 1 Samuel 2 verse 36. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and say, please put me in one of the priestly positions that I may eat bread. Oh, wow. So the Bible says that the sons of, of Eli did wickedly in the sight of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to me saying that the sons of Eli did wickedly. I tell you, they did wickedly. They had no reverence. They had no reverence for the Lord. I hear the Lord saying that they had no reverence for him. They had no reverence for him. They had no reverence for their father or their earthly father. They had no reverence. They had no reverence. I heard the Lord saying they had no reverence. They did not fear me. The word of the Lord came to me saying that the sons of Eli did wickedly. And I hear him saying they had no reverence for him. They had no reverence for their earthly father. They had no reverence for their father, God. The Bible says that they robbed the people of the best they took the best for themselves and then they slept with the woman what a wicked thing in the house of the Lord I hear the Lord saying that the sons of Eli were wicked the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding they lack both the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel 2 that the sons of Eli, they continued to do wickedly because God had purposed to punish them. I hear the Lord saying, when people question why God is allowing certain things to continue, why God is allowing the wickedness of people to rise and continue and it seems in our eyes that they're getting away with it it seems like they are continually wicked and they're just getting away with it the lord says that he desires to punish them i hear the word of the lord saying that those the heart of man was evil and it grieved the lord in his heart in the book of Genesis 6, the Bible tells us that the heart of man was evil. He did wicked continually, evil continually, and it grieved the Lord. Now, Eli was a priest unto God. How do you think the Lord felt when uh, Eli's sons, which, would, which should have been trained in the Lord, how do you think he felt when he saw Eli's sons transgressing against God? Because when the man of God came to Eli and he was rebuking him and saying, Now your house will be cut off. You are cursed with a curse. When he was saying you should have led in a different way. You should have trained your sons. Look what it says in 1 Samuel 2. This one's hard. It says in verse 30. What did he say? What did he say? He said that the sons of Eli did wickedly before the eyes of the Lord. The Lord's eyes are in every place at once, especially in the tabernacle. 
The Bible says that they were rubbing the people of the best of the offering. They were sleeping with the woman. They were raping the woman. Man, they, you know, their father was the priest. So it was like, oh, they're the priest. So it doesn't matter what they do. But when the man of God came to Eli, he didn't rebuke his sons only. Eli got the rebuke because he did not train. I hear him saying, train a child up in the way that he should go so that when they're older, they should not depart from it. The sons of Eli were allowed to do what they did. You know, and some people have people in authority or parents in authority or people that they know in authority they think that they can get away with certain things especially in the church they say well that's the pastor daughter and that's the pastor this and this is the apostles this and this is the prophets that and that's the so don't tell them anything just let them do wickedly but I came to tell somebody that when you think God isn't looking. It says that the Lord left them because he wanted to what? Punish them? It says the Lord desired to kill them. Kill them. So you're seeing darkness going about in the earth. Darkness is covering the earth. Darkness is overshadowing the earth. You're seeing darkness pushing forth. And you're wondering, well, how come, you know, people are just doing evil. The Bible says that the Lord desired to kill them. And he did it as a sign. And when it was time, when judgment has come, the Bible says that the man of God went to Eli and said, this shall be the sign, both your sons are going to die. The sons of Eli, the sons of Eli carried the spirit of disobedience, which is at work in the sons of disobedience, which is the prince of the powers of the air, which is Satan himself. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. They didn't want either. They did not revere the sacrifice of the Lord. They did not revere what was being done there. They did not revere who God was. They did not revere what their father was called for, what he stood for. They just did wickedly, continually. Now, the Bible says there was a contrast because... On his son, Samuel, he was grown up in the way of the Lord. He wore a linen ephod, and an ephod is worn by the high priest. Now, when we saw him wearing that linen ephod, we would say, that didn't make sense. But his spirit. Was reverential to God. His spirit understood. Because Eli was not his. Uh, his physical father. But. Hannah had brought him back. To the tabernacle. And he was consecrated. Or he was. Sanctified. To him. So. Even as Samuel was not Eli's physical child, he was the one that God was choosing. He was the one that God knew the obedience of. Even as Jacob and Esau was a prime example of, Esau was the disobedient one. Jacob was the obedient one. And God passed the blessing from the eldest to the the youngest just like Eli in Eli's case where Eli was the high priest and he had physical 
prodigal sons that should have received that blessing of who he was and what he stood for the bible tells us that samuel was the one who received the transfer samuel was the one who had the heart of obedience so the bible tells us that even as eli's sons did wickedly god desired to kill them in the book of first First Samuel 2 verse 25 it says God desired to kill them not spank them not punish them but kill them so he allowed them to do wickedly even in Sodom and Gomorrah they didn't stop doing what they did even in the book of Genesis just before God brought the flood they didn't stop the Bible says that the Lord's heart was grieved and I hear the Lord saying, let them who do evil do evil. Let they who do righteous continue to do righteous. Let they who are filthy be filthy still. A man is given over to the desires of his heart. Whatever's in there, the good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth good, good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil things the sons of eli were demonstrating which spirit ruled inside of them even though their father their earthly father was the priest they were demonstrating that us okay hmm, even here that the father was even punished because uh, it said that god when the man of god came to talk to him and rebuke him about his sons he got the rebuke I heard the Lord saying just like Eli allowed his sons and he would have spoken to them and told them no you're doing wickedly but God wanted him to cut them off God wanted him to punish them but he didn't allow that punishment because the Lord desired to kill them some people are not getting punished and you say like well that's the pastor's daughter that's the apostle's daughter that's the apostle's son that's the prophet's son that's the and but look at her and how they and look what they're doing they even uh extortion to the people the people are bringing the best sacrifices onto god and the priests are supposed to receive yes but they were robbing the sacrifices the women the holy women were coming to church they were coming to the tabernacle to offer sacrifices unto god and they were raping them just extorting the people taking what they wanted discarding the rest i hear lord saying that those who are extorting the people of god shall be punished and he will leave them to the point of punishment just like the sons of eli did wickedly because the spirit of disobedience was working in them they had no desire to follow god no desire to do what god had commanded somebody this is a lesson we're going to read where um the man of god came to eli he didn't go to the sons he came to the one that was in charge it says verse 27 then a man of god came to eli and said to him thus says the lord did i not clearly reveal myself to your to the house of your father when they were in egypt and pharaoh's house did i not choose him out of all the tribes of the priests of the tribes of israel to be my priests to offer upon my altar and to burn incense and to weigh an effort before me What does the effort signify? Sanctification. A high calling. That's when David, remember when David wore the effort? And he went to seek the Lord on what to do about the, the, the plundering of his people and his wives. The Bible says, Did I not give to the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Did I not do that? Why do you kick at my sacrifice?
It says that Eli, but Eli wasn't doing it. But he did not stop his sons. He told them no. But he didn't stop them. He should have banned them from the temple. He should have put a punishment on them or something. It says, and my offerings, you kick up my sacrifice and my offerings. Which I have commanded in my dwelling place in the house of the Lord. And it says, and honor your sons more than me for not correcting, for not saying a thing. Those who were in charge got punished. And it says, even so, and make yourself fat with the best of the offerings of Israel, my people. Therefore, the Lord God is. Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But, but, so he, you know, when he says, I am God, I am God, I'm not, God is not a man that he should lie, nor should he repent. So if he feels like retracting something, he will retract it. He's not a man that he should lie. And neither is he a man that he should repent. If he wants to do something, he does it and you can't tell him no. It says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. You know, he says, if you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, what would he do? He will exalt you in due time. So it mightn't be the most pleasing thing to you. Those who are in charge of church, those who are in charge of a tabernacle, those who are in charge of a place of worship, those who are in charge of the place of gathering, gathering, those who are in charge of where sacrifices are made, offerings are given, and you're doing wickedly. The Lord says, I've left them because I desire to kill them. They're extorting the people and I've left them because I desire to kill them. I will shift the blessing. I will shift the blessing there's going to be a transfer those who are not doing wickedly and those who are esteeming the offering and sacrifices of the Lord there will be a transfer and it says it says behold the days are coming and I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house so there will not be an old man in your house that is horrendous that is horrendous you know what the Bible says um, even as you honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Or oh, honor your father and your mother. That the days might be long in the land. He says, I'll cut off the arm. What does that mean? They will not be priests again. And where did he do it? He did it with Samuel. He took Eli's unnatural son. And gave him the blessing. All right, look what it says, even as. Who shall have a soy, lava hasa, leva casa, and amando, e kiribiata, rava soy, laha. So God chose Samuel. God did the shift. He did a transfer. He shifted the blessing. Those who did evil, Eli's sons, were cut off. It says that there shall be a sign. Now, there shall be a sign to you that will come upon two your sons, Hophni and Phineas. In one day they shall die, both of them. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest. So he's looking at Eli as an unfaithful priest. Because he did not correct. Because he did not institute order. Alright, look what it says. Even as he cut off Hophni and Phineas, in one day they shall die, both of them. And then I will raise up a faithful priest. So some people have died in houses that were corrupt. Some people have died. They were taken out because of corruption. 
where the sacrifices of the Lord were laid, where the offerings were laid, it was extortion to the people. Some people were even sleeping around with the churches. Some people were sleeping around with the women. And sleeping around with the men. Whatever they were doing, they were extorting the people of God. And doing wickedly in the sight of God. And they said, nobody saw, but God says, leave them. Because I desire to kill them. There will be a shift. There will be a a transfer. He says, I will raise up a faithful priest in my house. And it says, and it shall come to pass that everyone who's left in your house will come and bow down to him. Shift. And it says, and say, please put me in one of the priestly positions that I may eat a piece of bread. They will know that the anointing was on, on Samuel. They will know that the anointing was upon those they despised. They will know that the anointing of the Lord was with those they hated and those they stole from. I hear the Lord saying, don't offer defiled food on my altar. All right, so come, come with me. Come on now. Come on now, come on now. Sharabasu Vashaliya Rabakai Sanandi Kiliyata. Alright, so when God called Samuel, I just want to see where the killing of Phineas and not Ferb. Hophni and Phineas. Alright, hold on a second. I'll find it. Casa Mandu Casa Bahasata. The first year needs to be in the death of the sons. The death of the sons. Hold on, hold on. I want to see where the both of them died. Hold on. All right. I want to find the death of... Uh, Hophni and Phineas and tied up, right? Hophni. 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 That sounds Dutch, doesn't it? Hophni. Is it not? I'm, okay. Kirabasu, Rabasi, Rishile, Yakadanda, Yaklaha. Nikarabasu. Hold on, King James Version, give me. Hophni and Phineas. Alright, so the Lord says that both of them will die the very same day. So, I want to see where they were slain by the ark. Why? They, they had no reverence for it. It was like, haha. Whatever, haha. <laughs> This is not a whatever. This is a lesson. It says First Samuel 4. Alright, take it up in verse 10. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and every man fled to his tent, and there was a very, very great slaughter, and there fell Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. Also, the ark was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, died. They died. They just died that very same day. We didn't say much about it. Just that that day. Because if we take it up in verse 7, it says that the Philistines were afraid. For they said, God is coming to the camp. And they said, woe to us, for such a thing has never happened before. So even the Philistines had the fear. And it says, Woe to us who will deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with the plagues in the wilderness. You see, his name was known. He was known as Yahweh Jesus, the God who struck the Egyptians with the plagues. But Israel was not struck. Israel was delivered. These were the ones that they were declaring what God had done because they had heard 
So they say, oh gosh, no, we did. And the Bible says that Hophni and Phineas died when the ark of God was captured. So Eli got to hear about Hophni and take it up in verse 17. It says, So the messenger answered to Eli and said, Israel has fled before good Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. And also your two sons, Hophni and Phineas, are dead. And the ark of God has been captured. And it happened when either mentioned the ark of the Lord, Eli fell off the seat backward at the side of the gate and his neck was broken and he died for the man was old and heavy and he had judged Israel 40 years so both the sons died just like that and Eli died just like he fell down and died the Lord says that he would cut off the arm cut them off from being priests cut them off the Bible says even as Samuel was chosen God was calling Samuel because he knew his what his heart God does not look at what the outer appearance he does not look at the skin he does not look at how much money you have he doesn't look what's your father's name uh, your earthly father's name he doesn't look at your stature he doesn't look at the things that people look at but the Lord looks at the heart and he knew that Samuel was a man after his heart he knew that Samuel was the one that had to be the priest next he knew that the house of Samuel would be ordered to keep the order of God that's the word of the Lord and what I heard in my heart that's what he said to me the spirit and that's what I hear I'm not gonna add to it and I'm not gonna take away from it but Abba says just like the sons of Eli did wickedly there are people in the house of God doing wickedly there are people that are uh, extorting the people if you will there are people who are rubbing the house of the Lord what's supposed to go to the priest they're rubbing the priest what's supposed to go to the leaders they're rubbing the leaders and God says they're not conducting things the way that it ought to be. And just like Israel suffered, the people are suffering. And he says, because of this thing, I will cut them off. They'll find that their, the, certain people are not receiving the anointing, just like Hophni and Phineas. God says he's going to cut off the arm. You cut it off and you will give it to another who is faithful. That's the word of the Lord and what I heard. If you don't know God is the God who waits to exempt his judgment, who watches and rules from the midst of his throne. If you don't know him as the one who took out the wicked sons of Eli and will take out every wicked heir, will take out every single one of them that think they can extort the people who are Israel. Now is your time to come to him. Believe in your heart, confess your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you shall be saved. Pray with me. Say, Father God, I come to you a sinner. I'm sorry that I sinned against you. I'm sorry that I backslid. Thank you for coming as Jesus Christ and living a perfect life for me. Thank you that... You became a sinner in righteousness. Thank you that you died and you were buried and on the third day you rose again from the grave, giving me life over victory, hell, death, tribulations, and trials. See, I forsake religion and tradition of men and I run to you, God. See, I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior. Meaning he walks through every possible walk of your life with you and for you, victoriously. Doesn't matter if you feel. He already walked it out victoriously. Claim it. And he will begin to rise upon you. He will empower you to do what you need to do. 
Bible says, I, I boast in my infirmities that a power of Christ may rest upon me. Look what he says. Even now, say even now, I confess you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So leave me and I'll follow you all days of my life. Close your eyes. Father God, you said if those who said that prayer would believe in their heart, confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, they shall be saved, and even this one. Let your peace and surpass all understanding be with them. Your grace that is enough. Surround them. Angels of the Lord given unto them. Yes, Lord God, cast away disease and sickness from them. Father, even now, give them the assurance that if they were the only one on this planet, you would have died that same horrific death for them. Lord, even this one. I hear something. I hear something like us. A boiling. Anyway, even this one. Give them your amazing love that fills them up. Give them the understanding and fear of the Lord. Lord, even now as you lead them to a water baptism, that they might be baptized in water and the Holy Spirit of fire. Even now. Give them an unction of your spirit. Lead them to a Bible-believing person that they might be well nourished in the word. And await your glorious coming. In your holy and precious name. Help them to know that angels are rejoicing in heaven for those saved souls. Help them to walk in your ways. Be the light in the soul. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome, beloved. Love it. Welcome, welcome to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus loves you. And all of you. Shalom, shalom. Jesus. God bless you.